Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your resident brown skin girl back again with another video. So today I thought I would do something different. I'm going to be reviewing a series, but not necessarily reviewing because I feel like reviewing means I'm going to be giving you back to back thoughts on what was happening throughout the episodes. What I'm going to be doing more. Okay, let's start here. Basically, after I did some research, I realized that Blood and Water is basically based on a true story, like a case that actually took place in South Africa in Cape Town. Although obviously there are some things that are dramatized, dramatis, dramatized, dramatized, dramatized. There are some parts, obviously, that have been dramatized to make the series more interesting. But the basis of it is exactly a case that happened in um, Cape Town. So what I want to do is, yes, I want to give my pros and cons in terms of my thoughts regarding the series. But then I also want to tell you guys about this case and see where we can link it as we go along to what happened in blood and water because i was looking in the trailer and in i didn't see anything on netflix that showed that it's been based on a true story but when i came across the story i was like mm, there's a lot of similarities here so i don't know if they did disclose or say that it's based on a true story but you guys will hear as i tell you the story you'll realize that there's just so many similarities so let's start with the pros and cons what did i think of it okay so blood and water is obviously a south african c drama series that uh is on netflix it took me some time to start watching it because i don't like it when something has too much hype about it it kind of repels me it makes me feel like i'm not interested in watching it because most of the time when something has too much hype trust and believe it will not live up to the expectations i'll give you an example i know some people are going to get triggered and touched but it's my personal opinion queen sono had so much hype you know so much hype hype expectations everyone was like oh it's gonna be amazing blah 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 then i was like okay let me give it a chance first episode did i didn't i think i watched one or two episodes but it just it just didn't do it for me. The acting for me just wasn't it. The storyline for me just wasn't it. I just felt like something was missing. And I mean, guys, yes, of course, it's nice to celebrate um, South African TV series. Series. Oh my goodness, English. Why are you doing this? <laughs> of course, it's great to celebrate South African series. But I don't think we should lower our standards. I feel like whatever series you're watching, ours needs to match up with it like this. So we must not settle. Like in terms of viewership, if you really enjoyed Queen Sono, that's great. I mean, obviously we're not all into the same thing. But for me personally, a lot of aspects about it I didn't enjoy. Whereas with Blood and Water... I was gripped. I think maybe I'm also into mystery and... Okay, guys, I was rambling, so I cut myself off. Let's get into it. Pros and cons. I only have one con, and it's actually not even a huge... It's not a huge con. It's just something that I thought maybe they would have done differently. Majority of my things are pros. I truly, truly, truly enjoyed Blood and Water. I finished the six episodes in, like two days i have no real complaints the production was great the quality the setting the actors how everybody played their role you felt engulfed you felt involved in the series i loved it i enjoyed it so much i think it's just one of those south african productions where we're all just sitting here in south africa like yeah we did that because it was really, really good. I enjoyed it. I also loved how... Okay, this is also part of the con. 
I enjoyed how it didn't drag too much you know sometimes with series you're on the fourth episode and you're just like get into it already i didn't have that feeling with blood and water i felt like they they did not drag like things started popping off pretty fast which then for me also constitutes as a con and this is my con the fact that it went in so fast that i'm sitting here asking myself how many episodes will they have for season two to finish off the story? Because I feel the meat of it is almost done. We're almost going to, we already know, well, unless they hit us with a surprise, but we already know as viewers that, okay, Figile is Buleng's sister. And funny enough, I knew that from the first episode. I'm sure we all did. How everyone is saying, oh, you guys look similar. What, what, what? I was like, okay, so it's the sister. There's a sister that's been kidnapped. And now there's someone that has the same features as her. It's the sister. Then they tried to throw us off at like episode two or three. Was it three or four? Somewhere there, they tried to throw us off that a child has been found that was part of the kidnapping. And then we were like, is it possible that Figile is not the sister. And then they let us know, no, that's the wrong child. And then we went back. We're like, okay, Figile is definitely the sister. So I feel like the meat of it has been given to us. So I'm wondering how many episodes will it take in season two to get to the point? I hope they won't start dragging in season two to try and give us more episodes that it takes forever to get to the points. But that's just the only con that I had that uh, I wish we didn't find out so quickly and so easily that Figil is the sister. I, I don't know if you guys know what I mean. But other than that, everything was perfect. I give it I give it a 9 out of 10, man. Like, I have no complaints. I don't even know why I'm not giving it a 10 because it was that good for me. And I really enjoy series. And I feel like I'm very picky when it comes to series. Within the first episode, if you're not doing it for me, I'm over it. So for me to sit there and finish six episodes in two days, I could have finished it in one. But obviously, like, you know, you have things to do. But I really, really enjoyed it. Enjoyed it. So now I want to go back to this um, case that I said I stumbled upon. And we're going to look at it and you tell me if it doesn't sound exactly like blood and water. Like I said, I don't know if they revealed that they've based blood and water on this case. I'm not sure. I didn't find anything when I tried to look on Netflix and the trailer and everything. But this case is so similar. So I took a few notes. So I looked down every now and then. But basically this case was about Zephanie Nurse back in 90. The surname is Nurse. So Zephanie Nurse back in 1997, this baby was abducted in a Cape Town hospital seven days after she had been born. So apparently what happened was a lady who was dressed in maroon pants and a maroon top came into the maternity ward and everybody assumed it was a nurse. The other patients assumed it was a nurse. So she had contacted Zephanie and apparently Zephanie's mom fell asleep or something but this allowed for an opportunity for the lady to take the baby and run right so when the real nurse came and was speaking to the mom saying hey where's where's your baby babes and then the mom's on some what you know i thought you had it. you know that whole conversation so eventually they realized no this child has been abducted and when people are speaking about another nurse they realize no this other lady who was pretending to be the nurse must have been the one who abducted the baby so frantically they search 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 but alas they don't find the baby and they don't find the culprit so So essentially the baby ended up not being found um, and then 
I think as months went on, there was uh, a child that was found and they suspected that it could possibly be their child. Similarity number one with blood and water. They suspected that this could be the child, but upon investigation, they found that no, it wasn't the child. Because apparently someone in a nearby neighborhood just popped up with a child, but nobody ever saw her pregnant. So they called in to the police station and then the police conducted an investigation and it was found that no, actually it was the gender because apparently that child was male and they're looking for a female baby. So it was a scare, but it wasn't the child. Similarity number one, in a way that there, there was a scare of finding the child, but after some time they found out that it's not the child. Okay, cool. So they eventually don't find the child, but what the family does, the nurse family celebrates Zephanie's birthday every year. Similarity number two, because who was out here celebrating a birthday every year? So they continue celebrating their uh, abducted baby's birthday every year in hopes that they will eventually find her. Okay, cool. So 17 years later, they had other kids, obviously. They had three more kids. And then their daughter was about to go into high school. So they had another daughter who was going to go into high school. So apparently they had chosen another school. And for some reason, last minute, they decided to take their daughter to the specific school in Cape Town. Okay, I call child goes, attends school. She's obviously in grade eight. So as she's attending school and she's making friends, obviously, and being exposed, people start saying to her, baby, your features, you look like someone. You look like this other girl who's in matric. You guys look really similar, you know? Similarity number three with blood and water. Because remember, they were telling Buleng, um, Wade specifically was telling Buleng that she looks similar to Figile. So these friends as well and other people in the school were telling her, you look really similar to this other chicken with Jake. Okay, cool. So she sits, she ponders on it, and then she befriends this girl in Matric, and they become friends, and they get to know each other. So she's on some investigative tip of, could it be, could it really be that this is my sister? Similarity number four, because Bulen then started thinking, could it be that Figile is my abducted sister? Okay, so what um, this girl does differently is that she just goes straight away to her parents and she tells them that, no, there's a girl, egaso, egaso, egaso. everyone is saying that we look similar and I'm just thinking, could it be that it's our abducted sister? So um, the parents then decide, no, they'll somehow meet this girl. So they meet this girl in matric. And the, the dad also then feels like it's very possible because she apparently looked very similar to the dad as well. So they call the cops, they let him know, listen, these are our suspicions. We think this and this and this is the situation. And the cops get involved, DNA testing, everything. And what do you know? They are siblings. Can you imagine, mind blown that was her older sister and so um that's basically how the story ends in a way but it goes into a deep dark place but i'm not going to get into that but essentially that's what happened and that's what's happening in blood and water so isn't that super similar does it not sound like blood and water is based on this true story Tell me what you think. It's called, um, if you go on YouTube, you can just say Zephanie's case and then you'll, you'll pick it up. Oh, another thing that's similar, I'm so sorry because I'm not looking at my notes, I'm forgetting. Another thing that's similar is after they found out that Zephanie is the last daughter, I think um, they, had, they were calling her 
Mish Solomon, Mishay Solomon or something like that. But they find out, no, this is Zephany. So then obviously what they do next is go to the parents and say, listen, you know, what can I need for? So the mom says, listen carefully. Listen properly. The mom says, no, she um, apparently went through an adoption agency to adopt um this baby but when they look in it's there is no adoption agency as well as when they ask her okay at least produce the papers there are no papers so essentially she got sentenced to 10 years for abduction obstruction of justice just like a whole lot of things but she got sentenced for 10 years for the abduction. But similarity much? Oh, and also the weird thing is she apparently got given this child at the train station. Lady. <laughs> the story doesn't make sense. Excuse me. The story doesn't make sense because how is the whole of South Africa looking for a missing child and you were given a child at the train station and you're not on some, yo, what if this is the child they're looking for? So her story just didn't make sense. Like, honestly speaking, her story just didn't make sense. But till this day, she still says that she didn't abduct the child. She got given the child, blah, blah, blah. Fish paste. So yeah, basically that I found that very interesting. If you go on YouTube and you go Zephanie's case or Zephanie Nurse, you'll also get um the story. Maybe you can watch it for yourself and tell me if you don't think it's super similar to Blood and Water. But anyway, I just thought that was really interesting. Uh, I would really recommend that you guys watch it. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Let me know if you've seen it in the comment section. Maybe we can chat about it or on my other social media platforms. Um, Y'all guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please don't forget to comment, to like, and to subscribe. But most of all, please share the video so others can watch it and subscribe and join our little family. So y'all guys, thank you so much. There will be more. Love you.